dealing with work and energy, um, the reason I chose this problem is I had one of my buddies come up to me and said that during his homeworks he was working a problem that was similar to this. However, it was a uh, it was just a circle, and then when the test came, it was this parabolic shape, and he just got confused and totally blanked, and he was all frustrated because it was just a completely different problem. Well. I'm going to work this problem out and show that it's actually very similar to just a regular circle except at the end it's going to be a little bit different in terms of summing up your forces. So we have a two pound collar that when it starts at A it has a velocity of five feet per second and we have in a, a spring with a constant of ten pounds per foot and we need to find out what the velocity is at B and what the normal force of the rod acting on the collar is and whether and we need to find out the rate of decrease in its speed. So first off we need to use our conservation of energy to find out the speed that it's traveling once it gets to B. So I know I'm going to write a little bit different than what the dynamics textbook shows, but we have kinetic final plus potential final is equal to kinetic initial plus potential initial. I think the textbook writes it as TF and UF or v, uh, VF, I think but I'm just going to use kinetic and potential as K and U. Um, hope this doesn't confuse anybody. I just, this is how I was taught in physics and uh, dynamics is the only textbook that I've seen that uses T and V, so I'm just going to go with what I know. Um, shouldn't be too confusing. So we have, start with our final. So we don't know what the final is at B, but we can write it in terms of its kinetic and energy one half m v squared plus m g h that's the gravitational potential and now we need to write the potential of the spring well we have an unstretched length of two foot and our x is three feet from the origin to b so it's one half k s squared i guess i'll write the numbers in later on. I'll just write everything symbolically for now. And that is equal to our kinetic energy at its initial position plus its gravitational potential plus its spring, the potential of the spring. So now we can write our numbers in and hopefully we have enough to figure it out. So it's one half mass which is two pounds over our acceleration VB squared oh, I'm just going to do that VB squared plus MGH so gravitational potential. Well I want to use my x-axis as our datum so b lies on the datum so there is no h so uh, just so consistency I'll just write everything out and then our k is plus one half ten now s so it's the it's the stretched length of the spring. So we know when it gets to be, it's going to be three feet long, and then we have an unstretched length of two feet. So our s will be three minus two squared. I'm going to put this in a big old bracket because I'm going to write below it now, and all this is equal to and 
we have one half mass our velocity at A we said was five feet per second so five squared plus gravitational potential and our H in this case since it is at A it's going to be 4.5 feet above our datum so H is 4.5 plus one half our s is 4.5 uh, I don't know why it always jumps around minus 2 squared so we filled in all our variables except for VB which is exactly what we're trying to find so 2 divided by 32 times 0.5 gives us 0 0.03125 VB squared plus well this all just goes to zero and this is f 5 3 minus 1 is 1 squared times 10 times 0 0.5 is 5 and that is equal to 5 squared times 2 over 32.2 times 0.5. So that gives us 0.7764 plus, well, we have our 32s cancel out. So it's just our 2 pound force times 4.5 feet. So that's 9. And then plus our potential in our spring 4.5 minus 2 squared times 10 times 0.5 so we have 31.25 I'm not writing units but I guess I probably should be doing that well we know velocity in terms of feet per second so we'll just write that in the end so it's 31.25 plus 9 plus 0.7764 minus 5 divided by 0 0.03125 taking the square root of that gives us a velocity of B as 34 feet per second So that, we used our energy principle, conservation of energy. Um, we know that energy is not path dependent, so it doesn't matter how the color gets to be, as long as it does get to be, that's all that matters. So now we need to find out what the normal force on the rod, of the rod on the collar is, and the rate of its decrease in speed. So we need to find out what the acceleration is, whether it's positive or negative. But our textbook says it is decreasing, so we can already assume that it's negative, but we will figure that out. So our next thing we need to do is we need to write out our forces. So, or first off, we need to kind of draw our collar out here. And we need to, so we are assuming it is already at B. So here's our x axis, and here's our y. And we need to write, draw axes that are normal and parallel. So we know that this is our tangential acceleration and our normal acceleration. Um, I drew the normal to the right side because I want to show you guys something later on. It's just being aware of where, what direction you're calling positive and, and negative and all that good stuff. So what we can do is now we need to draw all our forces that are acting on this collar. So we know we have a weight 
that's acting at its center. So we're going to call that the weight. We have a normal force, obviously that's going in the direction of the normal axis. And then we, since we are at B, we have a force of our spring that's pulling our collar in. And so these are the only three forces that are acting on it. So now we can sum up our forces in the normal and tangential directions. So sum of the forces is equal to mass times or normal acceleration. And I'm going to call that positive. And you could do it the other way, positive. Um, I'm doing this way because this is probably something you haven't seen before. I just want to show you that you need to be aware of where your axes are and what you're calling positive and negative. So what we need to do here is first find our degree or its theta value that it's dropping from the x-axis. And we can do that by taking the derivative of our original function and putting it at 3 feet. So I'm just going to rewrite the equation. So we have y is equal to 4.5 minus one half x squared. So dy dx is equal to negative x and d squared y dx squared is equal to negative one. So theta is going to be equal to tan inverse of dy dx at negative three or at three because x is positive 3, it's just our dy dx is negative. So theta is equal to tan inverse of negative 3, and that gives us a value of negative 71.6 degrees. So this is negative 71.6 degrees, so that makes this theta, I guess I can continue, and since that is theta, this is also theta. Okay, so now we can find some of our forces in the normal direction, and so we have negative W times the cosine of 71.6 plus our normal force minus our force due to the spring and that is 90 minus 71.6 because we are worried about this angle right here because we know this is theta and so this little angle here is 90 minus theta. And that is all equal to our mass and our normal acceleration. So we know our normal acceleration is equal to VB squared over rho. And we do not know what rho is. However, we can calculate rho. So rho is given, I'm just going to write it down here, as 1 plus dy dx squared raw raised to the 3 halves over the absolute value of d squared y dx squared. So that is 1 plus negative 3 squared. I don't know why I wrote those brackets so big. So we found dy dx earlier as negative 3. And over the absolute value of the second derivative of y, which our second derivative of y is negative 1. 
So we're just going. I'm just going to write negative one and absolute value of that is just positive. So we have negative three squared. So that's nine plus one is ten raised to the three halves. That gives you thirty-one point six something. Hmm. Divided by one, so that's thirty-one point six two feet. That is what our row is. Well, that's the radius of the kissing circle, if you would, at B. So we need to find our velocity at B, which we found to be 34 feet per second, over our row, which we just calculated as 31.62, or 34 is squared. So, um, hopefully I can go ahead and erase our row. Have just a little bit of continuity. So now we can write our numbers in. I guess I kind of already did. So negative 2 times cosine of 71.6. We do not know the normal force. Minus force of the spring. So force of the spring is F is equal to KS or kx, whatever, so our k is 10, and our unstretched, or our stretched length is 1, so it's just 10 feet, so minus 10 times 90, oh, it's, isn't it, should be the cosine, so that's cosine of 90 minus 71.6. Sorry if I confuse anybody. Um, we are using we are using this angle, so we need to find the cosine of that angle because that gives us a projection on the normal axis. And so that is equal to. Let me just go ahead and crunch these numbers. 31.62 times 2. So this is equal to 2. Point two seven one. However, this is a negative two point two seven one. Why? Because a normal force is acting towards the center of origin. So really, our positive n is really facing this way. However, since I am saying that our are some of the forces are positive that way it all has to equal to a negative mass times the acceleration um, hopefully some of y'all are catching on so what I'll say that again or I'll kind of draw it out here if you have a circle or not even a circle. Let's have a string with a bucket filled with some water and you're spinning it around here. You know the normal force points inward. The same thing applies here. We set our kissing circle at B was 31.6 was 31.62 feet so our kissing circle is, uh, I'm going to draw this way out of proportion because, uh, or out of scale. So that's what our kissing circle is doing. I mean, kind of out of scale, but this distance right here, or should be 31.6 feet. Um, don't mind the three. I'm just kind of showing you guys. So our normal force should be pointing inwards. However, I label my axis as AN as this way, as you can see from our force diagram. So although our forces are acting in the right direction, our normal force is not. So that's why I have to say it's negative 2.271.
hopefully some of y'all get that. If not, um, I guess you could just call some of the forces N as that positive, and then you would have a positive W, and then that would be the cosine. 71.6 um, minus n because now you're calling down and to the left positive and it would be a plus 10 cosine of 90 minus 71.6 is equal to mass times acceleration so this would be your equation if you were to draw the normal force axis in the right direction. I purposefully did it in the wrong direction just to kind of just show you guys to be careful. Um, nothing more. Anyway, so going back to, I'm going to be using the red from here on out, not the black. So negative 2 cosine of 71.6 gives me negative... 0.631 plus normal force minus so 90 minus 71.6 is 18.4 cosine of that times 10 that's minus 9.49 is equal to negative 2.271 so negative 2.271 plus 9.49 plus 0.631 so we have a normal force that is equal to 7.85 pounds and so the only thing we need to find now is the rate of decrease in its speed decrease or increase I don't know why it says decrease because now you know you're looking for a negative number but um either way so some let me just use a different color here so the sum forces in the tangential acceleration I don't know why I put acceleration is equal to mass times the tangential acceleration. So going back to our force diagram, we have a positive W because I'm labeling my axis as down and to the right as positive. So W has a positive component in the tangential acceleration. And that is going to be W sine of theta, so W sine of theta, our normal force has no projection on the tangential because it is normal to it, but we do have a negative um, force in the spring, so it's negative sine of 90 minus theta. So negative force of the spring times sine of 90 minus theta is equal to our mass times our tangential acceleration. So W we have as 2 times the sine of theta which is 71.4 if I remember 71.6 so 71.6 minus our 10 pounds due to the spring sine of 18.90 minus 71.6 gives us 18 ah what was it 18.4 there's where my 18.4 is equal to mass and tangential acceleration so 2 sine of 71.6 
gives us 1.89 minus or just 10 sine of 18.4 so minus 3.16 is equal to our pound force 3.16 and that's divided by 2 divided by 32.2 so we have a tangential acceleration of negative 20.4 feet per second squared so I mean it's just a little more tedious I guess a little more time consuming than if it was just a complete circle um, because if you are at B, if you draw your force diagram, I mean, this is your normal, and this is your tangent, and if this is the normal force, and you also have projects on top of the normal force, you have the force due to spring, and then you have a force down due to weight. I mean, there's no sines and cosines, and and theta would be 90 degrees, or or negative 90, and and all that good stuff. I mean, it's just it's no different than than this. Only thing, it's a little more time consuming because you have to find rho for your normal acceleration, and and you have an angle of 71.6 degrees, so you just have to project your force of the spring and the weight and all that onto the right axis. That's about the only thing different. I hope I didn't confuse anybody too much about my axes, especially the normal force. Um, if that did confuse anybody, I'm sorry. Just remember that the normal axis should go into the direction of your circle, the center of your kissing circle, and if you do have it going away, that now your normal or your sum of the forces is equal to negative mass times acceleration. Um, if anybody has questions, feel free to let me know, and we'll see you in the next video.